Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. I'm here at the demonstration bench today. I want to show you a technique that uh, can really change how you bleed a clutch hydraulic release system in certain situations and applications. Blocking the slave cylinder from extending. A lot of times we get into the vehicle when it's time to bleed the clutch, somebody pushes the pedal, you open a bleed screw, and nothing really happens. You don't get much air out, you don't get any fluid out, and the frustration starts. But if you change the system, if you take a look at it and go, will this system allow me to safely block the slave cylinder from extending? Now we're gonna change the dynamics of this entire process. So let's take a closer look at how we can block the slave cylinder and bleed a clutch hydraulic release system. All right, let's set the scene. We're working on a Honda Civic or one of the earlier Nissan 300ZXs, both of which I've worked on and had somewhat similar setups where the master cylinder is on the driver's side on the firewall, of course, but the slave cylinder is all the way across the firewall, goes down across the front of the engine, comes back and hooks in. So you got this long line going to a slave cylinder. So traditional bleeding. One person is at the pedal, they push on the pedal, hold the pedal to the floor. In the installed state, this piston might be about there. As you push on the pedal, it moves slightly. It's pushing out against the fork and the bearing and the diaphragm spring. The pedal is on the floor. Now the command is to open the bleed screw. You open the bleed screw and the pressure in the slave cylinder is relaxed and the fork pushes back. You get this tiny little burp of fluid, maybe some air, coming out of the slave cylinder bleed screw. But what about the master cylinder? What's its contribution at this point? Just about nothing, because it was already on the floor and it didn't move after that. So all you did was you got a little burp out of this slave cylinder as it relaxed from applying that pressure. Not very effective. So how do we change this and make it more effective? We bring in some demos. We're just in the mock-up and discussion stage. If your slave cylinder allowed you to clamp across it safely and effectively and block the piston from extending, possibly put a small socket inside there to push it down in there a little bit, the line's connected, now push on the pedal with moderate pressure. Just enough to get some pressure on the system. Don't pump it, just push. Okay, now with it blocked, now open the bleed screw. Now the pedal that was being held down a little bit goes down further to the floor and you get a real flushing action from the master. It changes the system dynamics dramatically. Some systems won't, uh, won't allow you to block it with a C-clamp. Just to kind of illustrate the simplicity of the concept and not getting carried away with really making something up. Again, a short slave cylinder. I've actually got a bolt sticking in here blocking the piston. A couple of bolts going through and clamping it to a piece of angle iron. There's our bleed screw. Push on the pedal, create some pressure, hold, open the bleed screw. Slave cylinder doesn't move, but the clutch pedal goes to the floor and we change it and we start to get a flushing action from the top down. We've done this technique, I've actually done it at home on a Nissan pickup truck. This really changes how it works. It doesn't work on every vehicle, but I found out that my, uh, my Volkswagen Beetle, you can actually do it to that one because there's a bolt hole in the transaxle case that keeps the push rod and fork in position during the installation process. So found out that if you take that bolt hole, drop a bolt down in there, now as the slave cylinder pushes out a little bit, you're blocking the fork with this bolt. Push moderately, just hand pressure, on the master cylinder through the clutch pedal, and you create the same blocking action. Instead of just letting the diaphragm spring push back and just give you a little burp out of the slave cylinder. Blocking the slave cylinder dramatically changes how this works. While we're talking about blocking the slave cylinder, this has been a technique I've used for many years now to test a system and see if in fact it is bled. Any air in the system will feel spongy. So if you've just installed a clutch and done some hydraulic work of any kind, replacement, bleeding, accidentally open the line, and the clutch doesn't release, well, 
Wouldn't it be nice to try and figure out if it was the clutch or the hydraulics? If you block the slave cylinder with steel, again, C-clamp, angle iron, steering wheel puller, creativity, but safely, that brake fluid doesn't compress. And when you push on that clutch pedal with your hand and feel it, it only moves a little bit and then it stops moving because this steel is not allowing that piston to extend. Dramatically tells you right now. Typical dimension on a push rod, depending upon the system, we're talking about one eighth of an inch before the system closes and starts to compress fluid. Air will continue to allow that piston to move and it'll feel spongy. This is a good diagnostic tool correctly applied in certain conditions. Well, blocking the slave cylinder does not work on every situation, but there are times when you've got a long routing of the line, for example, on a Nissan or a Honda where the slave cylinder is on the passenger side of the vehicle. That really changes the dynamics of how this works. If you have any questions about a clutch hydraulic release system, a clutch, or a flywheel, please call our toll-free tech support hotline. Please check your vehicle's owner's manual for specifications on the correct fluid to use in your clutch hydraulic release system. Using the wrong fluid, such as power steering fluid, motor oil, transmission fluid, will damage the internal seals of your hydraulic system components.